Okay, let's talk about thrombophlebitis. But first, let's break down this word. We know that itis means inflammation, right? So what about phleb? Well, if you think about the word phlebotomy, it's referring to the veins. And then thrombo refers to a thrombus or a blood clot. So this is inflammation of the veins due to a clot. So in thrombophlebitis, a clot forms in the vessel and that causes inflammation and more swelling around it, which causes more clotting and basically it just perpetuates itself. Click the link below or visit nursing.com slash NFN for a free NCLEX ebook covering the 77 key topics. What can happen is part of this clot can actually break off and it can uh, travel and, and travel through the circulatory system. And the problem here is it is heading for the heart. So it could actually block one of these vessels causing an MI. It could block one of the pulmonary vessels causing a pulmonary embolism, or it could go up into the brain and cause a stroke. So what causes thrombophlebitis? Well, there's something called Virchow's triad. Okay, Virchow's triad tells us the three main things that create ideal conditions for clot formation. The first one is venous stasis. This is when blood is pooling and it's not returning to the heart like it should. This happens a lot when our patients are bed bound or they're not ambulatory because they get the uh, immobility that leads to pooling of blood within their legs. The second thing is any damage to the inner lining of a blood vessel. Um, this could be damage from uh, things like diabetes or any other condition that is a vascular issue. And then the third thing is hypercoagulability, which is caused by really any condition that causes the patient to be much more prone to clotting. So things you might see in a patient's medical history to tell you that they're at risk would be a previous thrombophobitis experience or previous DVT. DVT stands for deep vein thrombosis. These usually occur deep within the arms or the legs. Um, obesity is a risk factor. Any cardiovascular disorders like heart failure, MI, or uh, atrial fibrillation. Again, these are vascular issues um, and they cause damage to the vessels. AFib can cause clots because when the atria are fibrillating or they're just quivering, it causes the blood to pool within the atria. And therefore, when blood pools, it can clot, right? Because we saw venous stasis up here. We can also uh, see venous stasis with immobility like we talked about. In pregnancy, we see patients being hypercoagulable. Um, they just have much more blood within their system and they're much more prone to clots. So if a clot does happen, what are we going to see in the patient? Well, first thing is symptoms are going to be unilateral on the affected side, meaning it only affects the side where the clot is or where the thrombophlebitis is. You can see here this patient's right leg is much more swollen than their left leg. We see this swelling, edema, we see pain. Um, we'll also see redness and warmth to their skin, as you can see here. Um, and they'll probably be, you know, warm to the touch and tender. If you need more help breaking down complex topics like this one, make sure to head over to nursing.com slash NFN. Click the link in the description below or scan the QR code to unlock your free NCLEX review that covers 77 must-know nursing topics. Make sure that you learn this, that we love you guys. Now go out, be your best self today, and as always, happy nursing.